Please welcome the technical editor of Fire Engineering, Glenn Corbett, and the president of ISFSI, Peter Van Dorp. Good morning, and welcome back. On behalf of FDIC and the International Society of Fire Service Instructors, it's my privilege and a true pleasure to introduce to you Chief Patrick Kenny, this year's recipient of the George D. Post Instructor of the Year Award. And not simply because he's so deserving of the honor, but because I, like thousands of others, have benefited personally and professionally and truly been inspired by his devotion to firefighter well-being and health. Please enjoy this video about Pat Kenny and his service to his fellow firefighters. So why do I think Chief Pat Kenny deserves the George D. Post Instructor of the Year Award? In 2012, September 2012, when I took over as the director of the Illinois Fire Service Institute, I was lucky enough to have Pat Kenny assigned as the chair of my advisory committee. From the day one that I came here, he has been a principal advisor to me in my efforts to support the fire service in the state of Illinois. He has always been there to answer my questions regardless of how foolish they might be as I learned about the fire service. And as I got to know Pat Kenny, I got to realize that he was much more than just an advisor to me. He was an advisor to the state of Illinois Fire Service, and he was an advisor to the fire service generally across the country. His passion for teaching and mentoring others is extraordinary. It was uh, over 25 years ago, which I remember vividly, and I don't expect Chief Kenny to remember at all, but I was a student, not yet a firefighter, trying to learn about the fire service. I was welcomed into the Hinsdale Fire Department as a ride along that day, and Chief Kenny um, brought me in and was very clear on his expectations, but also he was very hospitable. They say you may not remember exactly what was said as much as how a person made you feel, and that sticks with me today, how I was welcomed there. That was part of my path towards realizing this career is a good fit for me. I like this place, I like these people, I like this job. Chief Kenny has a profound impact as an authentic leader and an authentic instructor. So um, he, he strikes his audience, if I can speak for his audiences, as someone you can trust and someone you can depend on. It is part of who he is to be a coach, to be a mentor, to be a leader, to be kind, to show up any and every time Whatever happens within your life, he is present if he knows you and you're a part of it. And I am fortunate enough to call him friend. And any time that uh, I have issues, things that go on in my life, that I just need somebody to listen, and most certainly that is the most valued asset of being an instructor, a teacher, is that he listens. I do feel very strongly that he's had a significant impact in shifting our, our culture, our mindset, uh, towards addressing the psychologically demanding parts of our job. What Chief Kinney has taught me about being an instructor is showing up and listening, because you never know the totality of the ripple and the impact that you have on the learner, on the listener, on the student on the other side. He has an ability to connect to students, to make them better personally and professionally in what is an extraordinarily demanding profession. Chief Kenny, thank you and congratulations. And I try to model your, your impact on the fire service um, with great respect. It is my privilege and honor for Chief Pat Kenny to receive the George D. Post Instructor of the Year Award. Congratulations, Chief Kenny. And just to wrap this up, I want to congratulate Pat Kenny on this award. Uh, there's no one more de deserving. There's nobody that's given more to the fire service. And this small little bit of being able to give back to Pat and honor him on a national stage is the right thing to do.
You know, I, uh, people who know me know that uh, I have a tremendous love for baseball. And uh, I used to think batting third in the lineup was about the biggest compliment you could get. And I thrived being third in the lineup. I didn't want to be third in the lineup today. Um, you've seen the power, I think, of what human beings can be. Um, that starts with Bobby. Pete had some very kind words to, to say at the beginning of the introduction. I had a chance to and have been impacted by what he's done. And back to what Bobby talked about, about having the courage to talk about things that maybe we didn't want to hear and do the research and fight for it. I've seen Pete do that. I struggled when it was time to put this speech together. Um, I don't like to write down speeches. I, I like to speak from my heart. Um, the video crushed me. Um, so if for some reason you think and you saw Mike Dugan and Mike not, might not remember it, but when I first started talking about mental health, I heard him on a radio show and reached out to him and the support he gave me and the confidence was, was amazing. So ironic to see him up here. When he got emotional and he said, I'm sorry, what he got emotional about was pretty powerful. And I'm an emotional guy. So I'm liable to get emotional during this. And if I do and you think that there's, there's some sense of weakness about being emotional, Mike and I will meet you out back and we will kick your ass. Um, <laughs> however, if you're a big guy, you go to Dugan, and if you're a smaller guy, you, you come to Kenny. Um, first of all, and I always tell people when they give these speeches, please remember to thank your family, because um, usually you forget until you're done and on your way driving home. So I, w I was blessed with an amazing family. Um, with a great wife and three great sons, who, as you know, as instructors, you travel all over and so you're, you're gone from home a lot. And with our job, between work and shift and work and double shifts, and then on your day off instructing, you're, you're really gone from them a lot. And they have to share you, and I couldn't have done it without them. I obviously want to thank Fire Engineering and the International Society of Fire Service Instructors, two of the mainstream organizations that give us what we need to do our job safely. Um, it's, it's powerful to have those two organizations even know who the hell you are, let alone to be able to recognize you for an award. When you become an instructor, usually there's one person, and, and I think everybody kind of alluded to it, that reaches out to you. I had two. Um, I had Chief Jack McCaslin, uh, who passed away two years ago, and Chief Bob Buse, who are part of the Illinois Fire Chiefs Association. Um, I was a student in an instructor one course, and it was pretty damn boring. And um, I was supposed to speak and do my 20 minute talk after lunch. And the topic I had was fire prevention. And I sat in the classroom nervous and looked around and this department had spent almost three weeks redoing their training room with different uh, exhibits of sprinkler systems. So when they came back from lunch, I thought I'll liven it up a little bit and did a little bit of humor about while you guys were gone, I just threw up some props that I could use for my presentation. Um, I hope you really enjoy it. And I looked at the two chiefs in the back and they were not laughing at all. In fact, I got the dead on stare like, well, okay, they'll be calling my chief when I go home. And when the class was over, they said, young man, come back here. And when I went back, they said, have you ever taught before? And I said, well, I was a high school teacher before I became a firefighter. They go, good, because next week we have another instructor one class, which I figured the follow-up was going to be, and you're retaking it again? <laughs> Instead, they said, and you're teaching it. I was like, oh, no, I got, I got out of that biz to do this. They're like, no, you're teaching it. So if it wasn't for the two of them, I wouldn't be standing up here. I also, from the Illinois Fire Chiefs, um, and he's sitting here, which, which tickles me, Forrest Reader, runs all our programs and for years has had the confidence in me to t talk about leadership and company officer development, the things I love, and, and I thank him for doing that. You saw that wonderful video that the Institute put together. Never put a video together that makes you emotional before you're going to stand up in front of people. But I thank Jill, who's here, who did so much work on that. I was blessed. I had two colonels um, who were the directors, Colonel Janey and Colonel Mortensen, who uh, had my back and thought that the input that I had might help the Institute. I, I can't thank them enough for their support. Um, and currently, I have Chief Jimmy Moore and Chief Paul Gardner that allow me to be part, a very small part of leadership, training, and resiliency. And if you don't get that chance, you're not. 
Now, you know, if you keep doing the thank you, you're going to be up here forever, and it'd be like the Academy Awards that start playing music. So I'm kind of done with the, with the thank you part. So having been a student here, having then had the chance to teach here, one thing I saw was common among the instructors who were, who were very powerful and the best of the best, and that was that they challenged and they inspired with their words, but they taught by their example. So I dedicate this amazing award to my son, Sean. <laughs> Sean died by suicide at 20. He was diagnosed at five with clinical depression and he suffered, I'll get it back together, he suffered from mental illness until he went to heaven at 20. When he was 10 and a half, he wrote the following in a journal for school. I'm an expert at fixing things and running. Good thing he took after his mother. My best subject is spelling. What I like to do is swim. And when I grow up, I'll be a fireman. This award, and I looked it up, so I understood the history of the person it's named after because that's powerful. This gentleman was considered to be the father of visual training. And so from this little point on, I'm going to start to use visualization for you because it's important to me. Because I certainly am not on this stage because I'm a great instructor or a great speaker at all. But remember what I said about those qualities that I admire in all of my experience, whether here or abroad, challenge and inspire with words and teach by example. So at 3.30 this morning, I was sitting on the toilet in my hotel room. I know a little bit more, inf I don't want you to visualize that. That's not where I was going. <laughs> but at 3.30 in the morning, I was doing that because I was so frustrated with this that I didn't know what to say. And something came to me, I know who it was, and I had a visualization about what I was supposed to do. And when he got on the bus today to come over here, the bus was empty. And I looked around and I pictured in those seats men and women that we've lost in the fire service, both active and retired, who died by suicide. So I want you to visualize for the last little bit I'm up here that this stage is full of them. They're all around me. And when they're up here, they don't look sad and in the pain they were in where they felt like they only had one decision to get out of it, that they left their families behind, their firehouse behind, the stuff we don't understand. They're all smiling because they're all healthy now. They're in a place, whatever you call it, where they're finally healed. But our challenge is how do we keep people from getting there? How do we make that difference? And you heard Bobby talk this morning about sometimes you just gotta step up and go, no, that's wrong. That's not true. The thing we've commonly believed, it's not right. This is what's right. So visualize, if you would, for them. I'm here today because of Sean Kenny. I'm here because he taught me the truth about mental illness. And he did so, remember what I said, those qualities, he did so by challenging the stigma of mental illness. He inspired those he touched and was around with his words. And he taught me courage and resilience like I had never seen by his example. So now I want you to visualize Sean up here, because he certainly is up here with me or I wouldn't get through this. And I want you to listen to his message, not mine, that we need to take care of our people. We've gone through such a rough time in this last year, but the history of our service is we go through rough times. We hire the best of the best. We hire people who care. We expose them to the worst things that can happen, and we're shocked when it impacts them. Well, it does, and we need to be ready for that. We have to reach out to them. They have to know that it's not a weakness to ask for help, that it is indeed that bravery and courage that Bobby talked about this morning. It takes strength to reach out, and that means for all of you also. Sean would say to you when you feel that it's self-care, you've got to ask for help because it's the only way to make you stronger, to keep you doing what you're doing. And anybody who thinks mental illness 
is a character deficiency or a weakness as opposed to a physical illness, now I don't care how big you are. I will kick your ass outside when we're all done. So I challenge all of you today who call yourself instructors and all of you do or you wouldn't be here and don't diminish how much that means. I want you to follow that simple equation. Challenge and inspire with your words because they're powerful, more powerful than you'll ever know. And then teach by example. Because remember, don't diminish who you are because it's not about you. It's about them, right? That's who we're trying to get that message to. So, Sean, I dedicate this award to you today, buddy. The best instructor I ever had about life. And I miss you, and I hope I've passed on the lessons the way you and your mom pictured me doing so. Because I had always dreamed about him being a firefighter also, and you know what? He made it. And he's one of the best damn firefighters I've ever known because when he gave his life, he has saved so many others by doing it. So, Sean, I hold that until I see you again. But this one's for you. Thank you. Hey guys, I see you, bro.